ಮತ್ತೆ
Testing. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Prof. Welcome. How are you, sir? Welcome, sir. Yeah. Meenakshi, ma'am, please welcome, sir. We can start the session. Thanks for yes, being here. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, good morning. On behalf of University Center of Research and Development, Gilgotia University, I am delighted to welcome Dr. Abdullah Bingani, Senior IEEE Member and Fellow Academy Science of Malaysia, this morning to indo muscat one-week virtual workshop on writing skills. Thank you for being here and for bringing your energy, ideas, and expertise, sir. Thank you, sir, and again, welcome to you. We are here today so that all of us involved in research, planning, and development can benefit from our expertise and get guidance among us on the near and long-term modern research development. Sir is now a professor at Faculty of Computing and Informatics, University of Malaysia. Prior to that, he was a professor at Department of Computer System and Technology, University of Malaysia. He obtained territory academic qualification from University of Full UK, BPhil and MSc Information Management and University of Sheffield UK for PhD in Computer Science. Prior to his degree studies, he acquired the teaching certificate from Kenta Teaching College, Diploma Computer Science from ITM. He has vast teaching experience due to having worked in a number of educational institutions, locally abroad schools, Women Teaching College, Ministry of Education, uh, UK University of Sheffield. His interest research talk in 1983 when he was chosen to attend the three-month scientific research course in rec sam by ministry of education malaysia since then more than 190 academic paper have been published in proceedings respective journals internally within the top 10 percent ranking he received a very good number of citation, Web of Science, uh, 4,421, H Index 34, Scopus 6,224, and H Index 40, Google Scholar 10,475, and H Index 50. He has supervised more than 60 PhD students. Area of interest in research includes self-organized system, machine learning, reinforcement learning, wireless related networks, big data, and data science. He was working on mobile cloud computing with a high impact factor grant of USD, eight leg for the period of 2011 to 2016. He was also principal investigator of research Besides that, he has received several grants of more than RM 350,000. He was a director center of mobile computing research, which focuses on high impact research. <laughs> the center has published more than 90 papers in tier one and tier two ISI index journal in the last five years. He was also a director of center of data science and analyticals. He served visiting professor at King Saud University, Saudi Arabia. He served as a reviewer to several high quality journals and was chief editor of Malaysian journals of computer science. ISI index journals, he served grant proposal evaluation panel of government and government number of years. Locally, he was visiting professor at the University of Malaysia. He serves a panel for grant proposal evaluation. So thank you so much, sir, sir, your experience, your research experience. It's a great pleasure to us for all of us you are here, sir. 
i welcome to you thank you so much you have given to us a very valuable time and we really want you have we have to utilize and we have to get uh, enhance the knowledge from your side thank you so much sir welcome sir thank you prof okay can you see or not uh, no cannot uh, let me let me share let me let me share how uh, oh, let me wish Can I start now? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, let me start with my first slide. The title of the, uh, today, uh, thank you very much, uh, Rob, for inviting me to this talk. And today, I will be talking about my experience in supervising PhD students. I have chosen the topic because simply that i want i want to give the a kinds of sharing experience so to me phd student is very important for for university and then as well as for the lecturers uh sometimes the lecturers the supervisors they are fail to supervise the student that's why i need to give some kinds of input about this by the way allow me uh, to warn you that i'm sharing my experience and never be my intention to impose on you i only give my uh, experience and never be my intention to impose on you <clears throat> and again i want to i want you to remember that our background will be different mine is from computer science and maybe some of you may be different with different background <clears throat> in our today's focus is about research at the phd level many students are confused with the meaning of phd even some of them do not know what it is and allow me to give some ideas what phd is about it's about a training is a training is an exercise is a training is an exercise to qualify to qualify the student to be a researcher in future secondly academic industry research will be different we at the university we are doing academic research totally different with industry research there are industry research focus on commercialization but academic research more focus on knowledge generation because the main functions of a university number one to produce student and number two to produce knowledge knowledge only can be generated by research and also you have to remember theoretical versus practical we are more toward theoretical versus than practical so and lastly the point that we have to remember all the time that doing phd he has a very limited time period normally 36 months for uh, 3 years or maximum 4 years the best way to approach phd research is by having a perspective of project management <clears throat> project can be defined at least with three with seven characteristics number one definable purpose that's the first uh, characteristic start end point mean that you has to have a start point and the end point it cannot prolong it because in phd is same thing we have 36 months or 48 months that's all <clears throat> and it's a unique project is a unit similarly is a research is a unique 
undertakings. Temporary activities, similarly in, in, in research, in PhD research, is ad hoc deployments, ad hoc. And in, the, uh, in number four, you can see the characteristic of a project across organizational lines. In PhD, we are combining different skills as well. And then in PhD, in non-repeatable, we can repeat what has been done in project involve unfamiliarity. In project, it involves risk-taking, similarly in PhD. It involves risk. Sometimes our experiment doesn't work, we have to take the risk. And lastly, the process of working toward to achieve the goal. This is what you call it stages of research in PhD. And in order to be successful completing the PhD study, one has to understand the requirements for PhD completions. Engineering approach, right? which uh, suggests input, process, and output. You can see from my slide, see, I divide into three main uh, components. Input as the entry requalification, entry skill, language. <clears throat> Without this input, it will be very difficult to undergo the, the second, uh, second stage of process we are doing research. And number three, output. Of course, the process produces disease as well as the exit requirement. In this case, uh, maybe program requirement, publication requirement, language requirement, depending on university, from one university to another university. Some, for example, some uh, university, they impose certain language to pass and so on. This depends on the university. From one university to another university, they have different exit requirements. But basically, it's about the same. They got entry requirement, they got research, and they got they got uh, exit requirement. <clears throat> okay, let's. Uh, if you look at that, the before this, I put uh, research process. I got. I I suggest four stages for milestone. Milestone number one, <clears throat> there are four mi milestones in PhD. Milestone serve as an indicator to the progress of the process. Indicator, right? It's a, it's a way, it's a linear way of progressing. Okay, this is number one. If you can look at that, this uh, the from the table is clear to us. We we need at least 20, 36 months to complete one PhD study. I divide research for twenty. I mean, it takes twenty nine months. This is writing takes uh, four months, and the rest about two, uh, one or two to three months, and total about thirty six months. Now maybe maybe some of you maybe asking me. Is it possible? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. And then if you look at that, that's the milestone. Establish the problems. It takes six months to complete it, at least. Modeling the solution, it takes three months. Evaluating the solution, 12 months, at least. Document, documenting, eight months. So altogether, you can count, you can total up 29 months, right? 29 months, 20, 29 months. And then the rest, you can, you can use that the time for writings. Then, okay, when, you, when we talk about this is writing, of course, at the end of the research, it must produce a thesis, a re thesis report, a thesis report. And the thesis, they have several chapters. Chapter one and chapter seven, whatever. Some supervisors, they choose six chapters, some five chapters, but no one can answer why five 
Why six? Why seven? The answer should be the number of chapters in the thesis should reflect the stages of research process. Is that the answer? Not because of the supervisors say so, or oh, my supervisor says so. That's not the answer. The answer should be it should reflect the stages of research. Now, in the first milestones, a problem need to be established. The key word there, establish. However, many people misunderstood the real meaning of a problem. How can we offer a solution to a problem which we cannot even understand what is the problem? This is the problem. So what is problems? I will explain later. We want to find the relationship between problem and the cause. How do we know the problem is a problem? And we have to evaluate trivial versus severe problems. These are all the questions that need to, be, need to be answered in choosing the problems. So let's start with what is problem? Okay. Problem is a state of negativity. I want to emphasize, it's a state of negativi negativity. Never be accepted positivity as a problem. Never. Never a state of positivity considered as a problem. A problem is a state of negativity. Negativity refer to undesirable states. Something that we do not want. Okay. I'll give you another example. This is, I call it, anatomy of problems. Anatomy of problems. You, from causal effect relationship, we have the causes, what trigger, the state of negativity, and the consequences, the effect. In this case, for example, I'll give you a simple example. The interference of mother-in-law lead to state of negativity that is disharmony, then the effect is disrespect. So where is the problem? The problem is this respect, not interference of MIL because MIL is only a cause. Similarly, no money. When you have no money, it means that the purchasing power, you are get, be, becoming less. It means that in that and in fact, you cannot settle the bills. Is that? Now, so what is a research problem then? Again, just now we define what problem is. But not all state of negativity is considered a research problem. The question is, what is a research problem? To answer that, we have to look at the purpose of the research. Number one, if you look at all the research in the world, they can be divided into at least two purposes. Number one, to solve the problems. Number two, to append to the body of the knowledge. So, if the purpose is to solve the problem, how can we offer a solution if we cannot understand what the problem is? It will be imp impossible, right? So we have to understand what the problem is. Another perspective that I would like to, I would like to share today is
by using systemic thinking paradigm. According to this paradigm, this perspective, we are analyzing the relationship of the matter entity being this functionality. In this, in this regard, the functionality signify an existence of a problem. The state of negativity serves the main objective test. For example, here you look at that when you when you decide what the system is, you can a system is called a set of entity that interact with each other to perform a function. Now you see, look at that at the entity level, you can you can analyze at the relationship you, uh, level that you can analyze even at the function level that you can analyze to find a problem. Now, the problem, that, the type of problem that we can, we can analyze, number one, malfunctions, defunction, and perform. So if you look at this framework, easy to identify a potential problem. This is another example. Just now I mentioned the word, okay? For example, you look at here. This is a very good example. The husband and the wife at the, at the state zero, their relationship stable. They live happily with love and respect. It means in state zero. But in state one, the interference of mother-in-law affect their relationship. So just because the interference of MIL, the relation become unstable. And then it turn to be the problem arise, this respect of the wife to the husband. Look at here, this is the problem example. Now example number two, no money just now. So no money, no money lead to undesirable consequences. Cannot pay the bills, cannot buy necessities, cannot even blah, 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 blah. So many things that you cannot buy, you cannot do with, without the money. And if you look at that, it's actually cost lead to the state of negativity. Okay, example of solution propositions. Just now when we look at the, the causal impact relationship, we realize that the cause is the, is the factor contribute to the, the state of negativity. So in this case, the solution of cause, we have to eliminate the cause. This is proposition. Eliminating the cost is only a proposition, is a hypothesis. So how, the question is how to eliminate. We got option one, we got option two, or we got option N. These are the research that we had to conduct. We had to find the best options in order to eliminate the cost. We want to make sure which option that can reliable in order to eliminate the cost. This is research. Okay. That's why solution can be found if you want on the cost of the problem, on the cost of the problem. Now, in general, if you look at all the problems can be classified according to these two axes. One axis, objective axis, another axis is called type axis. So all problems can be divided into hard and soft type of problems. Similarly, with a single and multiple objective. So if you look at that, they are intersection, they have different types of problem, uh, uh, sorry, a, a different type of solution. For example, if you have a single objective hard type problem, then the engineering approach is more appropriate to be used. But if you have multiple objectives and it's hard type problems, 
and opt of course we have to use optimization approach and, and whereas multiple objective and soft type problem we have to use systemic approach it's not systematic this is systemic it's not systematic system systematic is systemic and the last one is uh, if we have a single objective with uh, a soft type we have to use analysis system analysis approach these are the classifications of problem that we can we can use in order to find the solutions for our problems and you see that the the, the most difficult one is a uh, soft with multiple adjective that very difficult difficult what i mean by difficult mean it take longer time to complete the research so now we we go where to find the problem of course we can find the problem from the literature that's number one from the literature i will explain later number two from observations and number three from we dispute the theory dispute the theory from research grants and this is a normal one from supervisor's recommendation or project recommendation or research recommendation so when a phd student come to, uh, to 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 engage with a supervisor if the supervisor has a grant normally they will ask the student to do what the research grant is about so in that case the supervisor will determine the problems uh, for the student to address okay uh, another one that i like to mention here this one just now i said where this one how okay the first one just now i said literature how okay before that before i go then i want to emphasize that i saw many people students they are citing people recommendation as a problem it does not justify the validity of the problems if they read a paper for example and the paper suggests this suggests that this does not mean that the, 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 the suggestion is something that we can take for granted to consider as a okay that's why even worse when i look at that in the abstract they put references to the problem so if they are put references to the problem it's not their problem it's uh, someone else's problem And the way that I, I suggest that we have to acquire data, we have, we have to acquire data, we have to organize data, extract and tabulating, and lastly, to analyze. Allow me to share a bit after this. This is the, the, the first step. Number one, we have to extract data from research article relevant to the domain, the domain, right? So how many that we have to collect article? I personally, I would suggest 180 to 120 articles. The most recent article, not more than five years old article, not more. Unless it's an anchor paper, unless it's a new paper. Mommy. Right? Mas yeah. When we have, can you hear me, guys? All? Sir, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Can when we when when we extract data, it means that we are extracting the problem in the paper. We are extracting the problem in the, uh, sorry, we are extracting the problem in the paper. We are extracting the method used in the paper. We are extracting the finding in the paper. And also, we are extracting the future work stated in the paper. So after we after after we extracting the paper, all the, the relevant data, problem, method, and finding, and future work, 
And you can see that if this is, uh, if you takes two papers per day, so we have five days a week, time four weeks a month, you got 40 papers ready has been extracted. But if you work harder, four paper, four articles per day, you got 80 papers per month. So meaning that one and a half month, you have done extracting data from papers, extracting data from papers, one and a half month. If you work four articles per day, two in the morning, two in the afternoon. Don't tell me you cannot do that. You are not reading line by line, but you are, you are scanning only the article in order to extract the problem, the, I mean the data of problem, method, finding, and future, future work. You are extracting, not you read line by line. We are not here to make you, ask you to make understand, you also understand about the paper, but just get the data. Okay, and then, after you have extracted the data, then you have to put into a table, just like I show you on the slide, you got a, article one, A1, A2 until A ends. It's up to you, but at least I said at least 80 up to uh, 120 articles. If you want to go more than that, it's up to you. But definitely, if you go more than 120, 20, it will um, cost you more time to be spent. So I think it's enough to start with 120. For PhD. And then you got a P1, P2, P stand for problem, M for method, F for finding, future work for FW. So you can see that you got a column, different columns. So every column is equivalent to one set of data. Is equivalent to one set of data. You got a set of data of problem. We got a set of data of method. We got a set of data of finding. We set of data of future work. A set of data. Okay. Then after that, what you have to do once you have you have to analyze it, the set, the column, by classifying all the problem with the same keyword, with the same attribute, to form a group. So we got PG1, PG2, and so on and so on. So how many PG that you can create depending on similarities that you can find from a set of problems. You can do the same thing on method, a set of method. You can do the same thing on the sets of finding, and you can do the same thing on the sets of future work. Okay, this is just to explain about it. Then after that, you once we have already tabulated, of course we need to process it. The data that you have collected means nothing unless you have to you have to process it. So we get a set of pro pro p p mean problem. Okay. Remember, it can be from one, two, three, until and problem 120. Then you create different set based on a common keyword from set three. Do the same and so on. And then you can create subset one, subset two, subset three. And then the interaction between subset you can find taxonomy. The taxonomy is actually is a form of Knowledge contribution in. Then from that, you can see you, can see you got G1, G2, G group, G1, G2, G3, and so on. From that, you can see. 
कोविड वाला भी आपको तंग कर रहा है बार बार पता नहीं क्या है मुझे मत्या जी मैं अगर ये इनकाउंटेड हो रहा है ना तो मैं क्या करूं किरण इज स्पीकिंग ही आ रहा है भगवान सो फ्रॉम दिस टेबल यू कैन सी एग्जांपल वी गॉट काउंट 32 फॉर G1 17 for G2 and and G3 18 count so if we choose 70 it mean that we are competing what people have done so the the, the easiest way i think this is the most uh, advisable way to do is by choosing the least one 18 18 one so this is the way that we can identify Uh, which area of problem we we should focus on okay observe the most popular and the least popular attributes of the table the most popular attribute indicate that there is already a lot of work has been done by previous researcher and therefore you should you should most likely avoid tackling or using the that particular attribute it should give more attention to the to the least popular attribute to show that there is a room for improvement in the area consequently in your writing will be right now what we have shown what i have shown just now is only one column is on the, that is uh, the problem then now when you are comparing the group in one column is called analysis is called analysis but when you are comparing between column you when you are compare, comparing with you are comparing or you you are investigating between two sets of data you are actually doing synthesis you are actually doing synthesis in phd you must have analysis as well as synthesis you have conducting vertically as well as horizontally when you are investigating the relationship between set a or uh, set one set with another set you are actually doing but uh, horizontal analysis or uh, but uh, horizontal investigation okay this is very important so now the question is how to evaluate the merit of the problem Okay, we have we have found the problem, but how do we know the problem is fit to be our research problem for PhD problem? How do we know that? So first, we have to check again its trend, its future trends. If we can go to Google Trend or find anything that we can uh validate the is this is a strain then i think if the trend is needed in future then we have to we can proceed is something that already obsolete we shouldn't we shouldn't venture into that anymore shouldn't number 2 you must consider is severity just now when at the, at the beginning of the slide i mentioned the word trivial and severe consequences so is something very trivial why must we spend time to do research on it and lastly we must consider its impact its impact these three uh, consideration we can use in order to check the merit of the problem that we are going to choose the first milestone says that we have to establish the problem The first milestone says that we have to establish the problem. What does it mean by establishing a research problem? Meaning that we have to provide empirical best evidence. Empirical best evidence. We cannot just simply say, "Oh, my supervisor suggests me to do this, therefore I can accept that." 
your supervisor or supervisor is they have no authority to qualify the in establishing the research problem he has no authority she has no authority he or she has no authority you have to provide empirical based evidence then we can we can we can accept that number two you must eliminate the form of or its originality and integrity otherwise we cannot we can accept that and lastly we have to prove its truthfulness otherwise is a, is a lie only okay guys this next uh, slide that i would like how to have this research problem you how this one establishing a research problem what is it but now how of course you have to ver verify the results of the published work by conducting re-examination, re-experiment, or re-simulations. Because by doing that, you can claim that you already established the research problem. Without empirical evidence, how can you claim that you are already, I mean, someone already uh, establishing a research problem? Like, remember, guy. This is something that I want to mention here that this problem can be accepted by having evidence. Secondly, we must use theory to argue its validity. Okay. Now we go to milestone two. Hopefully, in the first milestone, we are able to establish the research problem. I already explained how to find the problem. This is the one that now. Second milestone is called modeling the solution. Just now, when we establish the, when we want to investigate the problem existence, we use cost-effect relationship model. The cost must occur before the effect. When, wherever the cost occur, the effect must also occur. There must not be another factor that can explain the relationship between the cost and the effect. So this is very important understanding, a very important concept that we must comprehend. Now let's see. What is solution modeling? Remember, it's only when we model something, we model something. It is, it is a representation of idea. A, present, a presentation of idea to solve the research problem. So how can because we are at the end of the of the of the study, we have to make a report. Of course, we have to model the solution. So in this case, we can use mathematical modeling. Or even you can use graphical modeling, or you can use textual narrations. But remember, if you are using textual narration, normally the examiners or even the supervisors, even or whatever, they will they can question its validity. But if you use mathematical modeling, it will be very very difficult for them to argue with you. Yeah, they can just simply accept yeah, your modelings. <clears throat> now, hypothesis. The word hypothesis comes from the word hard plus thesis. It means that, in other words, it is untrue thesis. 
unproven thesis, unprocessed thesis. And it's a, a proposition, it's only a proposition. It must be tested to validate, to validate its, propo its propo propo uh, propositions. Now, the, the many problems, I mean, what I can see by many students, when they state the hypothesis, that hypothesis never be tested. So there's no point for, for the hypothesis to be, to be stated in the thesis if they are not undergone testing. It's no point. Okay, so hypothesis must be tested, must be tested. Otherwise, there's no more meaning of hypothesis. Can I have a break? One minute. I just want to. Okay, sorry. How to find a solution? Game. How to find a solution? Number one, I would like suggest you have to use from systemic perspective. All right. Just now I mentioned the word systemic. The word systemic, meaning that we are looking thing as a system. Everything we look as a system. So that's why it's called systemic perspective. And then remember, in a system, we has three main component: the entities, relationship, and function. And number two, we have to use uh, from theory based analytic. We have to analyze from theory base. And lastly, this is something that I always use from nature perspective because nat nature can teach us many things. We only can, what we have to do, you just simply uh, make uh, reflections on what's going on in nature, then we can learn something from, from it. Okay. Example. Example. If you want to write systematic, uh, systematic literature review, or you want to write survey paper, for example. Okay. You have you can use literature as a as a jung as a jungle. If you look at jungle from distance nothing that you can tell much about that jungle. But if you go closer to the jungle, you can see many things. Of course, when, when you can see many things, you can, you can tell many things as well. Because by seeing that you can tell many things. This is the, the analogy that you can use in uh, from nature that we can apply in doing our research. Similarly, if you study, for example, you want to do research in capability, for example, why not we study the concept of our tummy, our, our tummy elasticity? For example, someone, okay, our, our stomach can accept, it can accept a loss of drink if someone drink beer. But they cannot take the same amount of beer with coffee. So the degree of elasticity by the tummy, by the tummy, is different. So this is what you have to study about. Why? We, can, we take beer, we can take more. Why when, when we take uh, coffee, you cannot take more. Why? We have to study that. That's why we can apply this in, uh, in a research about capability. How to model the solutions? As I said just now, the best way is in mathematic notation. Because no one can argue in mathematics. No one can argue. Because it promises accuracy and clarity. It promises accuracy and clarity. That's why we have to suggest, we have to use mathematic notation in modeling the solution. 
Again, if we can model the solution, the, the, the solution in mathematics notation, we can even test it using formal verification. We even we can test it formal verification, whether to test whether the system is possible working or not. And number two, we have to illustrate the proposed solution that can solve the problem. This is at the different level, at the system level, at the functional level, and the, at the algorithmic levels. Okay. And number three, we have to illustrate the effectiveness and reliability of the proposed solution. This is how we model the solution. Because by having all these three, then the examiners will be very happy with the report, then they will not question much about the report. Okay, next uh, we go for milestone number three. Okay, this milestone, it, uh, it need 12 months to carry out, 12 months, one year to carry out. When I mentioned 12 months, I assume that every single day, the student can work at least eight to 10 hours a day. Eight to 10 hours a day at least. So they can complete the process of evaluation within 12 months. So what to evaluate? We have to evaluate the effectiveness of the solution to solve the problem. We have to evaluate reliability of the solution. Okay, that's number two aspect that we have to evaluate. Cause we have to evaluate by using empirical data. So how you want to get data? Okay. Allow me to give you simple uh, analogy. I have read many books about qualitative and quantitative. It has different definitions about that. But let me, let me discuss with you. The word qualitative comes from the word qual, quality. The word quantitative comes from the word quantity. Now, let's say I want to measure, let's say one guy, let's say what name, whatever name, let's say I give a, John's, I want to measure, I want to do research qualitatively of John. I want to, I want to measure, I want to research, I want to investigate if, uh, qualitatively John. What does it mean? It means that I have to measure the quality of John. If I want to measure the quality of John, I have to get the data from outside of John. I cannot ask John to get the data of quality of John. If I do that, it becomes biased data. Okay? But if I want to investigate quantitatively of John, then I can, you, I can measure data from John, height, weight, and blah, blah, blah. The data come inside John, not outside John. Okay. So the, the, the concept of qualitative and quantitative, many, many people, I don't know, maybe they have different, they are different. Okay. Lastly, I mean, people, not last. The next one is about data source. Data just now that we have to generate come from two sources. 
Number one, mathematical modeling. And number two, simulation. And number three, emulation. All these three sources generate data. The data will be used to in, will be used to infer conclusion or generalizations. Okay. Okay, now we go to milestone four. Document, documenting. Now, when we want to write, remember the end of the product of our, our PhD is thesis. Thesis is a report of the work that, have been, that we have done. This is comprised of chapters. Chapters comprised of sections. Section comprised of subsection. Subsection comprised of paragraph. Paragraph comprised of sentences. So it means that you can see that this is the, what we call it, unit of writing. So when you, write, for example, in, when you write a section, for example, a section must contain more than one sections. Uh, sorry, subsections. It's only one sub subsection. It's not section. Okay. Similarly, if you write for example paragraph, it should be more than one sentence. You can only one sentence as a paragraph. So it's very important for, for, for to understand this. Now, the structure of UOW, unit of writing, I use the word units of writing, <clears throat> it has three main components. Number one, abstract. The contents of abstract is an objective statement of UOW. Number two, it is supposedly to be a summary of the content. When you write as abstract, you should summarize the content the contents of that unit of writing. If you are writing a chapter, there should be a summary of that chapter. If you are writing a section, you should write a summary of that section. And the second component is called body. Each U or the body contain A, B, C. A, abstract, B, body, and C, conclusions. So now, another misconception, conclusion. Sometimes, at the end of the chapter, many people use the word summary. I don't understand why they have to put summary at the end of their chapter, and at the beginning also they got summary. So you cannot put more than one summary. If you put uh, a summary <laughs> in your abstract, why must you put a summary? In, in, the, in the conclusion. The conclusion should be your, uh, your judgment on the objective achievement. How many chapters? Just now I mentioned that. If you ask many lecturers, many professors, oh, they say, oh, must six, seven, uh, whatever, five. But I don't think it's the, the answer. The answer should be much at the stages of research. We can make the research become more clear and it should have more. Okay. Chapters simply mean independent unit of writing, a complete report of research process, concern about one main matter. Okay, for example, in chapter one, you are actually is a, is an introduction. You introduce the examiners with, with the research on uh, uh, nature. Chapter two, literature review. It's a very, very, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, specialized. Yeah. 
microscopy. The next one, how, how to write chapter two. This is, is, is a report. Must bear in, mem bear in mind, this is, is a report of the undertaken research work. LR, literature review, for showing the level of mastery. We call it epistemology. And number two, to review the related work. To review the related work so that there's no duplication take place. There's no duplication take place. If PhD study is doing something that has been done, that work cannot be accepted as a PhD. Cannot be accepted as a PhD. Okay. And number two, you review the concept which are stated in the title, normally in nouns. So this is about chapter two. You write about chapter two, you write about the concept that you can find from your title. Okay, and there are two parts. One, you show the mastery level, your understanding about the domain. And number two, you must review the related work. Okay, that's why it's very important just now when you look at the, just now you have to collect extract data under 120 papers because that paper that data can be used for chapter two. So you are killing two birds with one stone. You are killing two birds with one stone. Okay. <clears throat> This is the structure of chapters in thesis. As I mentioned, mentioned just now, every unit of writing, they must, ha they must uh, have A, B, C. For chapter one, it, it has only A and B, no C. Chapter seven also, no C, only A and B. Only chapter two, three, four, five, six, they got A, B, C. Okay. Now, in chapter two, the conclusion in chapter two will be referred in chapter three in A. So this, there is a continuation between chapter two and chapter three, chapter three, chapter four, chapter four, chapter five, five, six, six and seven. There's a continuation about it. Okay, now the last one that you, we, must, uh, we must know whether we are ready to write or not. Am I ready to write? What indicator do we have to answer this? So for me, I prepare a 14 slide template, 14 slide template. If a, if a student can answer all the question in this template, if they can prepare this, this slide, 14 slide, then it means they are ready, they are ready to, to start writing. If they cannot, they cannot start writing. This 14 slide as well will be useful for candidate candidature defense. Slide number one, I call it title, name, and matrix. Title should, should be a title, not a sentence. Should be a title, not a sentence. Catchy, sexy, and unique. Reflect contributive masterpiece. No standard. No standard. Okay, but normally you can take the, 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 the title between 8 to 15 words. 8 to 15 words, but not standard, no standard. Okay. 
it must reflect contributive masterpiece. Slide number two, motivations. At least three motivations must be provided by the students. Motivation is what inspires to take up the work. Imagine that you are the one who is responsible to solve the problem and do not want to see its devastating consequences. Try to highlight three main reasons for, for taking up the work. Okay, consequences on life, financial losses, disorder in human life, selecting of system. These are the example that you can you can use in order to in order to to use for your motivations. Just now I said three three main points. Each one uh, one uh, each point one one paragraph. You must remember apply the principle IBC or ABC in the paragraph. Remember must apply the principle A A B C O I B C same. I mean introduction, but A also same. About 120, 120 word per point per point. And number three, slide number three, statement of problem. Statement of problem. Statement, why it called statement? Why it doesn't call explanation or problem description? Why? Because it's very simple. Because statement is a, it has a legal weightage. You go to the police station, you make a statement to the police. If you lie to the police in making the statement, the, the police will come and after you. That's the meaning of statement. In research, if you are doing a statement of problem, but at the end of, or at the, end of the study or during the examination or during viva, you are found to be to be lying, it means that you are not qualified to be given PhD. That's why the word statement there. I saw many people, many books in the world, they just simply write whatever they want without understanding the principle, the principle of the term. Okay, without understanding the principle of the term. Statement is produced as a result of generalizations on the causes of the event which lead to the problem existence. That's a statement. But not by quoting what people have said in the literature. It's not a statement. When you are quoting from people's work, it is not a statement. It is uh, only a, a problem. Uh, quotations. Problem quotation is not a problem statement. Okay. Slide number four, it called statement of, of objective. Okay. Objective that you want to state can be used to guide you to plan the research methodology. Right, because when you have the objective, then after that you must propose the methodology to achieve the objective. It's why it's called business methodology, because you use the method, you use certain method in order to achieve certain objective. Number two, as a yardstick to measure the achievement of the of the objective. Okay. Of course, we have to use Bloom objective, smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. But the first two characters, the first two elements must be exist in the objective. If not, cannot be accepted, be accepted as a 
Ah, okay, just now I already mentioned this. Every the stages objective must be reflected in the objective. Slide number five, six, seven is about literature review. I already mentioned just now, just now. I already mentioned it. Look at the look at noun uh, noun word or phrases in title as a domain of interest. Summarize fundamental concept. Do not do fact lifting or plagiarism. Objective of your arm too, I mentioned just now. Because please pay attention. Literature review allow you to identify potential problem. Identify potential problem is not a problem yet. It's only a potential problem. It's not a problem yet. You only can conclude a problem once you already establish it. Okay. Just now I already mentioned, if you got your own survey paper or review paper, you can use it by copying into chapter two. And strongly advise, you must use your own word, but ever, ever copy from any literature. Fact lifting is not allowed at all. Use your table or diagram or, or, of your own. Don't ever, ever use diagram or table that has been published. Use your own. Slide number eight, proposed solution. Just now I already mentioned that. I already mentioned that solution refer to your own idea to solve the research problem. It can be achieved if you have reviewed the work of others. Solution is your contribution to the knowledge. If it is not said before, effectively working toward the problems. Okay. Chap slide number eight. Slide number, number nine, you are modeling your solution. I already mentioned just now, you model the solution. Number 10, data collection, what data were collected, how data were collected, is there any tool, then the blah, blah, blah. All these things should be in slide 10 or maybe Slide 11, evaluation of process. How data were gathered outside the domain, inside the domain. Slide number 12, how data was analyzed. Okay. You got data, then of course you have to process it to become information. Once you got information, you have to process it to become knowledge. That's what you have supposed to do. So once you got data, you have to organize it, classify it, then you so that you can visualize it. Then after that, once you got information, then you have to generalize, interpret, and maybe you have to conclude. In order to produce knowledge, knowledge can be in the form of trend, pattern, association, classification, integration, and rule. If you look at that, that's why in the thesis in chapter six, for example or in, in article, in paper, in article, in section, result in discussion, it must contain graph or table. Why? Because by giving graph, it can show the trend, the patterns. So that pattern, that uh, uh, trend will become a new knowledge. That's why. In a, in, a, in a PhD thesis, definitely in chapter result and discussion, it must contain a lot of table graph, a lot, because that's to show that reflect the existence, the existence of, of knowledge. If not, you have no, have no knowledge. It's why we, why we need to have graph and table in section research and discussion because at the end we must produce knowledge okay slide number 13 finding what data reveal this is another point that i would like uh, okay 
It's not I mentioned the way. Genetic knowledge in the form of trend, pattern, association, classification. Now, bro, taxonomy, taxo, taxonomy, taxonomy. Now, when you write a survey paper or review paper, that paper must contribute knowledge. So here in review or survey paper, the knowledge can be created via classification or via taxonomy. That's why when you in your survey paper or review paper, if you can produce survey as it uh, produce classification or taxonomy, it has merit to be considered. If not, it's only uh, retail uh, retail work only. Retail, it, it tell back, back all the, the, the work that has been done, no, no value. And lastly, slide number 14, significant of the result. Significant refer to the impactful of it, to the society, to the community, the stakeholders, and even to the academia. So you must, so for this slide, that we, the, the student must be able to, to answer. If they can answer in this slide, 14 slide, then they mean they are ready to start writing. If not, and this 14 slide also can be used to measure the progress of the student. Maybe from uh, at the beginning, maybe they can start uh, slide number one, number two, number three, number four. And then after that, they can carry on, carry on, carry on. They can carry on until uh, slide 14. So when they can write up to 14 slides, that is to slide 14, they mean they are ready. They are ready to start writing the, the thesis. Now, another thing that I would like to mention here, PhD, it takes 36 months to complete. Some university allow to submit the PhD less uh, at, uh, at 24 months period. To, to me, the sooner the better it is because the real challenge in doing PhD is not about the subject matter, but to keep focus is the main challenge. To keep focus is the main challenge. So our student cannot keep focus for, 20, for 36 months. So determination is very, very crucial. Hardworking, very, very important, and self-discipline is a very paramount. Without these three things, I can say that it would be impossible to complete PhD. Lastly, thank you very much. If there is any Q&A, uh, if I can answer, I will answer that. Otherwise, that's all for today. Thank you. Prop, back to you. Minakshi, ma'am. Hello, no answer, no, 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 sorry, no question. If anyone is having any questions, you can uh, type it on the chat box. We will read it to the professor. No, sir, there is a no question. Okay. All right. Actually, sir, everyone is giving a very good uh, comments. Excellent session, very informative session. There is a wonderful session. Uh, they said all already cleared all, all the confusions. Anyone have any question, then they can just put it in the query, either raise your hand, either you can put it in the chat box. Yes, anyone have any question? I think, sir, your PPTs are so much informative and everything is clear. 
there is a no confusion in order saying thank you so much and uh, you, there is an excellent session from your side yes, thank you thank you very much guy all so if yes sir yeah thank you very much uh, thank you so much we will connect with you soon uh, after the session we will talk to you thank you so much for yes. your valuable information and our research scholar definitely get benefit for that because they need that session that is really very much info informative thank, thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you stop sharing